Hey everyone, and welcome to this uh, talk about expand. So I'm going to spend a few minutes describing a bit uh, what expand is and uh, a few of the key features of expand. Uh, this talk is only uh, 25 or 30 minutes long, so we can't go into all of the details, but I will talk about some of the key features of expand. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So what is expand? Um, so expand uh, is based out of the classic technology that was acquired by uh, MariaDB Corporation uh, around two and a half years ago. So it was uh, Clusterix was an existing product, and at MariaDB we have now taken this existing product and and updated it a bit and basically tied it to MariaDB. So what it does is that it brings distributed SQL to MariaDB. So in that sense, it's similar to something like CockroachDB or Yugabyte or even uh, for those who are old timers in, in the MySQL world, it's similar to MySQL cluster back in the day, which I myself was involved in uh, as part of my, my tenure at, at MySQL. So it has a lot of similarities. All of the distributed SQL has have kind of similar similar features, but the main idea is that you're able to to distribute the data across multiple nodes or, or multiple servers so that you're not constrained by by the limitations of one server. And the limitations could be due to size, it could be due to CPU power or, or many other things. But the whole idea is that it gives you a flexible uh, architecture that allows you to, to then scale out more and more uh, uh, as you need more and without any specific penalties uh, uh, going to it. So basically linear scalability more or less, which is different to many of the, of the solutions currently available in MariaDB or before Expand. Uh, now Expand is a smart engine. Uh, it is it, or it does exist in MariaDB as a storage engine, which means you can connect to it like a storage engine. But because Expand is a smart engine, it has a SQL parser on its own. You can also connect to, connect to it directly uh, and use MaxScale as a load balancer. So there's kind of two ways of, of connecting to it. Uh, I'm not going to talk in details about, about the difference between these two, but, but basically, obviously, if you connect through, through MariaDB, you get all of the features of MariaDB. If you use a direct uh, uh, connection, what in our documentation is called the performance topology, uh, then you basically don't have all of the features of MariaDB, uh, but you have the expanded native features available. All right, so let's look, let's look a bit further at the characteristics of expand. So it's built on a, on a shared nothing, nothing architecture. Uh, which basically means that the nodes are, are fully independent. Uh, there's no shared memory or shared disk or anything like that. All the nodes have their own hardware and then they communicate over the network. Uh, expand is or provides total elasticity. You can add nodes or remove nodes from an expand deployment. Uh, uh, very, uh, pretty much on demand. Uh, obviously you have to do some operate, you have to do some operations to, to to do that, and there are some things done in the background, but but from a user point of view, it's, it's pretty much on demand. Expand is very self-managing in in that uh, uh, it does a lot of things automatically behind the scenes, like redistributing data and things. So when you add nodes, data is automatically redistributed and, and things like that. And we're going to look at some of the details on, on how that is done as well. Expand is fully acid. Uh, basically provides strong consistency. It's not like some of the NoSQL solutions out there where there's eventual consistency, but this is strong consistency. When a transaction has been committed, it's been committed everywhere. There's no, no way of seeing data uh, uh, in a previous version of seeing data, data somehow out of date. It's completely acid. Uh, it has support standard SQL. Um, uh, the, the expand nodes themselves, when connect, connected directly, has a very rich SQL uh, parser. It doesn't support all of the SQL that you get through the uh, through MariaDB using it as a storage engine, but but most of it. 
And uh, one of the cool features that I'm not gonna uh, dig into that much deeper on this talk is, is how joins are handled, uh, where they're kind of uh, partially executed by each node and then it, uh, the node is executed by the first node, then goes to the second node and executed further. So it's kind of a really cool way of, of handling nodes and, and kind of optimized for, for being distributed as opposed to, to using something like a nested loop join or something that's the default in, in other engines in MariaDB. Um, it has continuous availability, uh, basically automatic failure where when, when a node goes down, you know, it basically transparently handles failovers and, and data distribution. And that's something we are going to look at how, how this is done. Anyway, so those are the pretty cool features of Expand. And let's look a bit further at the architecture. Uh, here I have... Uh, I have listed an architecture where expand is as a storage engine, which means that you do have a MariaDB server uh, in front of, of the expand storage engine. But if you are using the performance topology, you would basically have a similar setup. You just wouldn't have a MariaDB server in front, but you would connect directly from the application through max scale or something, and then directly to the expand node nodes. The green box here could be the application that connects directly, or it could also be uh, that, that you have max scale in between. Typically, we always recommend to have max scale or a similar load balancer in between uh, to kind of tra transparently uh, transparently hide things like node failures and adding nodes and so forth. If you use max scale, you don't have to, the application doesn't have to be aware of uh, what the current node topology is, which nodes are available, have you added more nodes and so forth, but max scale will transparently take care of that and, and the applications just have to connect, connect to max scale. So, I think for the purpose of this, this example, you, it's better to look at the green box as max scale and then the application collects to max scale. Um, in order to, to guarantee high availability, you need to have at least three nodes in Expand. Uh, Expand does run in a single node setup, but, but as, it is supposed, supposedly used, as it is used mostly for distributed SQL, for HA, you do want to have HA and you do want to have a minimum of three nodes. Uh, the reason why you need three nodes is of course to avoid a split brain scenario. If you only have two nodes, then it's impossible to distinguish. Uh, uh, because, in a, well, because in a network setup, it's impossible to, to distinguish uh, uh, a network failure from a node failure uh, with a two node scenario. Basically, as soon as one node fails, the other node would have to fail as well to ensure that there is no split brain scenario. Hence, three nodes is the required minimum because then if one node fails, the other two uh, can continue because they have a majority of, of the nodes. Right, so let look, let's look a bit at how the data is distributed and what goes on inside Expand. So um, in Expand, each table and each index will be divide, divided into something called slices. Uh, here we're going to kind of look at how it, how it would be done for, for one table, but this is done in your, in your database. This would be done for every single table, every single index would have the same kind of distribution. Uh, so here we have an expand table. It will be divided into what's called slices uh, across the expand. Now basically a slice is like uh, a certain amount of rows in the table. It's like a partition, except that you can't really specify how this table is partitioned. It's done basically by automatically by expand, typically using uh, a hash value of, of the primary key. Anyways, on this example, we have three nodes. So we will have three partitions, which is here represented by the different colors here. You have a blue, a gray, and a, and a green. So basically each of the parts of the table will go to one node like this. And now, of course, the table, uh, each node has a third of the table. But of course, that's not enough for HA. So in order to have HA, we also need to have a copy or a replica of each slice. So basically, each node will have uh, a primary, a slice that it's a primary and a slice that it's a replica. So here you see these nodes 1, 2, and 3. They will have a primary and they will have replica and, and like this. 
and by doing this we basically guarantee that there's HA because now uh, any of these nodes could fail and we would still have all data available. If the, if the third node fails here, uh, well, it, the, primary, the primary slice it had was the green slice, but, the primary sl but that the green slice also exists as a replica on the first node, so we're fine, and so forth. The second node fails, the gray slice, but that exists on the third node, and so forth. Obviously, two nodes cannot fail in this scenario. Now, in expand, you can actually set it up to, to have more copies of the data than two, uh, but the default is two, and, and for most use cases, that's the best option because adding more copies of the data makes writes slower because you have to write in more more locations. Like this, every time you write something, you have to write in two locations in the primary primary slice and the replica of that slice. But in theory, if you need it for some reason, you can also set up uh, expand to have more more copies of each slice and you can even uh, set up expand so that every node has all of the data and this actually can be really useful for for specific scenarios because it of course makes read performance faster if if all of the data is in each node but of course it means that it doesn't scale as well because well every time you add a node you, it has to have all of the data so that's something that can be used for specific use cases but also, what's really cool about Expand is that this is highly configurable, so you can actually set this up per table. So you can have some small table that you often use for references in joints and stuff. So you could have this table set up to, to be uh, fully available on each node and then have the other larger tables distributed. So that's something that can be used for optimization purposes. All right. So let's look at how elasticity works then. So we have our three nodes. Now this table is divided into more slices uh, than three. Uh, I think I have three times four. I have 12 slices here. Now by default uh, you will have at least as many slices as there are nodes. Uh, but in addition there is a maximum slice size which by default is eight. So as soon as you reach more than eight gigs you will get more slices as well. Anyway, this table is divided into 12 slices. They're evenly distributed across the nodes, like we see here, these colors. Yeah, I'm not very good at, at making slides perhaps, but these colors uh, are, are supposed to represent the different slices we have here. And for each slice, there's a primary and there's a replica. All right, so what happens if we have this, this uh, setup and we now want to add a node? Let's say our, our traffic is, is increasing. Uh, we're starting to reach the limits of, of, of our com computational power on each, on each node. We want to add more to be able to basically scale. All right, so let's go through the process. So first thing we do, there is an empty node, node added to the, to the expand deployment. So basically, you of course need to have the hardware. Then there's a simple command uh, that says alter cluster, basically add node. And the node is added to the cluster. It will be empty in the beginning. Uh, there's a short uh, uh, time period when this node is accepted into the, into the cluster, which is called a, a group change. And after that, everything is fully available. This node has no data yet, but everything is fully available. Then the background operation starts. So basically in the background, the rebalancer uh, starts copying primary and replica slices from the existing nodes to the new node. The purpose of this is, of course, to rebalance the data. So uh, we had our 12 slices distributed uh, on the three nodes so that each node had four primary slices and four replica slices. Now when we add a new node, basically it will take one primary slice from each node, this one, this one, and this one, and it will then take one replica slice from each node and copy them over to the new node. So we end up with a new setup where instead of having uh, four plus four slices on each node, we now have three plus three slices on each node. And we can see that by that, we basically have changed uh, uh, or been able to, to balance the traffic and the load uh, more evenly.
well, more evenly, on over four nodes instead of over three nodes. So that's pretty cool. And that's done in the background. You don't have to worry about copying slices or whatever. The rebalancer does it for you. So you basically, you get the hardware there and you do your, your auto cluster add node command and everything else is done in the background. So that's pretty cool. Now, what about the opposite? What about removing a node or if there's a node crash? Uh, this, the, the operations are, are pretty much the same. So this works in both scenarios. It could be that a node fails or that you, for some reason, want to remove a node. Similarly, when you want to remove a node, it's a command. Uh, but the same, kind of the same steps are, are, are taken if, if a node crashes. So first of all, let's say this node crashes in this scenario. So node four has crashed. First thing to figure out, can this cluster continue? Do we have all of the data? The answer is yes, obviously, because the cluster was set up so that a node can fail. All of the nodes that were primary on the third node are as replica slices on the other nodes. So that's the first thing. It goes into the group, group, change protocol again, where, it, where the cluster nodes, the nodes figure out, can they actually continue? And yes, they can. And then what happens after this depends on a timeout, because of course, if a node fails, it could be that it just had a temporary error and it's gonna come back up. So you can actually set a timeout. How long do you, do you uh, does your cluster continue in a mode where it's more vulnerable? Because here, of course, uh, we don't have copies of all of the replicas. We have all of the data available, but we lost a fourth of everything, which means that we don't have copies of all of the data. So there are some slices here where we only have the primary and there is no copy. So it's kind of a vulnerable situation. Right now, if we lose another node, we will be in trouble. But, but of course, if the fourth node is just rebooting, it's not worth starting to move slices around yet. But so there's a timeout, and once you hit this timeout or, or time limit, then the rebalancer kicks in again. And the first thing we do is, well, we reconstruct or we basically copy new primary, uh, uh, new primary slices from the replicas. So basically, of course, all the replicas are available. So we, for each primary that was lost, we take the replica and it's copied as a primary to another node. So that's the first thing. Now we have all uh, of our 12 primary slices available as primaries. And then we do the same thing with the replicas. So we recreate replicas of all of the, of all of the primaries. So now we have 12 replica slices as well after this operation. And again, this is done in the background uh, uh, and it doesn't really affect traffic uh, in, 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 the, in any other sense than that, that it keeps the, the nodes busy. And now we're back to three nodes and we have a copy of everything. So that's basically how, how, how removing a node or losing a node is done because the, the steps are the same. So that's pretty cool. So you can both add nodes and remove nodes. And the rebalancer does everything behind the scenes. So that's basically the coolest part of, of expand is the rebalancer. So let's look at what the rebalancer does. So, so with the initial data, the rebalancer is the, the, the part of, of expand that basically distributes your data into slices across nodes. It's the one who decides which slices go where and so forth. So that the rebalancer is key already with the initial data. When, you're, when you have data growth, it also splits large slices into multiple smaller ones. So for example, when you reach your eight gig limit on a slice, the rebalancer will split it into smaller slices. And then of course, these will be distributed uh, across the nodes as well. In some cases, you might have skewed data. Uh, you might have nodes that are much larger than others. So it does that too. It redistributes data to even out across nodes. Or you might have one node that has more data than others or something like that. You might have hot data. You might have one slice that is used all the time for some reason. The rebalancer would, would notice this and it will split the slice into smaller slices and just redistribute them across nodes. And all of this done again behind the scenes. And as we saw with node failures, 
what rebalancer does is well, it reprotects the data by ensuring that there's multiple copies so so basically as we saw in our example when one node fail and we lost uh, the copy of many of these nodes or, or and the primary but but we had we had the copies then the rebalancer was the one that made sure that we recreated copies of all of the nodes so we ended up with a in a state where we had two versions of every single slice that's the rebalancer and of course elasticity when you add nodes remove nodes it's a rebalancer that makes sure that we copy data so similar to node failures it, it redistributes them or or copies them and so forth uh, you can also set up expand to be uh, availability zone aware. So if you're using uh, if you're using expand on on EC2 or, or some other cloud scenario where you have availability zones, you might want to set up expand so that in case a whole availability zone is lost, you still have uh, all of your data available. And basically, the rebalancer can be made availability zone aware so that it balances uh, data across availability zones, not only across nodes, but even across availability zones, right? So it's really cool. It's pretty much the one of the secret sauce or key features of, of Expand that makes everything, everything in Expand work well. Um, and that's basically the basic intro into Expand. I, you know, there's a lot more, obviously. We could go into to how joins and other queries are executed and so forth. We don't really have time for that in this talk. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop here. Uh, if, if you want to find out more information about Expand, we have, uh, as Expand was released, uh, so first version of Expand was released as part of, of the enterprise server release in uh, December and now we had have the first maintenance release come out uh, last week uh, where we also put emphasis on the performance topology uh, we've added lots of documentation so so if you go to the docs section of mariedb.com there's a whole lot there so I would recommend going there we've also created quite a few blogs that goes into some of the key functionalities of expand so you can also go there to find out more and of course, I will answer some questions after this talk. So thanks everyone for listening and uh, talk to you later. So great presentation, Max. I quite like it. And, and welcome now to the Q&A session. Thank you, Kai. So you compared um, Expand to Cockroach and Yuga Base and MySQL Cluster. And, and I think I got three key technical takeaways from what you said, and I'd like to hear whether you think that's the right takeaways to, 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 to have. So number one is that uh, Expand distributes data on multiple nodes, uh, getting away with the constraint to have all data on one server. Correct, yeah. Good. And then the, the second one was the rebalancer. You, you portrayed the the rebalancer as the, the secret source of Expand that does all the hard stuff and all the, the cool stuff. So learning about Expand is a lot about understanding the rebalancer. Is that also correct? Yeah, that's, uh, that's true. Re rebalancer is kind of the automation, the, the, the thing that, that does kind of the things behind the scenes that makes things smooth, like adding nodes and so forth. Uh, uh, because that's the one that makes sure that when you add a node, data goes to the new node. When you remove node, uh, everything is reduplicated uh, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's what makes it possible, all the difficult stuff that Expand can do. And then the third one was uh, what you called performance top topology. So that, that there are several ways of using Expand. One is as a storage engine over MariaDB directly. Uh, or directly, indirectly, however you put it. And the other way, where one is to use it independently of MariaDB, and you call that uh, performance topology. Right, yeah, so that's, uh, that, I mean, that's what we call it, yes, in our documentation, so I want to use the same name, right, so that it could be easily found. But because Expand has its own parser, it allows you to do this, yes. Mm -hmm. So so then, uh, then uh, the first question I have is, if you have this performance topology and it sounds cool with performance, so what's the benefit for the end user of using Expand as a storage engine? So, so like the benefit 
is that MariaDB has the ser MariaDB server in, in itself has a lot more features than than Expand uh, has baked in. So you get the benefit of all of the features of MariaDB. For example, uh, the audit plugin, like if you need auditing, if you use MariaDB server, then you get all of the auditing features. For, for example, all of the security feature, the password plugins and all that, MariaDB has a lot of these that, that Expand doesn't. And of course, you can also then use uh, native or local inner DB tables and, and, and mix with, with Expand and things like that. So it, it adds a lot more compatibility with, with MariaDB and also uh, a lot more flexibility in what you do. Okay, makes a lot of sense. So um, on that note, you, you, you touched upon the topic of joints and I remember from the old days of MySQL class that that was a tricky thing. So uh, what about these joints? I mean, Judging from your uh, answer right right now, you would sometimes uh, for the things that needs lot of, need a lots of joints, you might pick another uh, storage engine and expand and optimize it that way. And you also pointed out that you could uh, do the the number of uh, slices in such a way that all data for certain tables would happen to be on every single node. I suppose that's a way to optimize joints as well, is it? Yeah, yeah, exactly right. So I mean, the data is still distributed, so you still have like some some penalties when you do lots of complicated things where you have to go to different tables and different in different places. You do have network hops. It's not as bad as as it could be because if you do a like if you do a nested loop join, uh, then you typically you go and get one row from the first table, then you go and get the second row, and every time you go and get a new row, it's network hops. You will have a lot of networks hop, hops now. Uh, in expand, there's an optimized way of doing joining where it's kind of it builds a program and, and then it sends it to each node. Each node does its own version of the program. So you kind of do a lo lot of local computations on each node. Uh, but still, it's still more network hops, obviously, than, than, than doing everything locally. So that's why if you have some reference tables that you often join with, you can, uh, and they're not that large, you can, you can have those in these, what we call all nodes format where all of the data is on each node. And then, then Expand is aware of this and it knows that, hey, this table, I have everything locally, so I don't, I don't have to, I can basically use it as a, kind of as, a, as, a, a, as something that does not change. I can just locally look it up and, and quickly. So to me, that sounds like a much more positive scenario than, than what it was uh, in, in uh, MySQL cluster where joins was, were working more or less theoretically in certain most scenarios. But in practice, they they uh, had a lot of response times, and you described quite a number of of safety nets in, uh, and ways to uh, to get the joints to be uh, efficient enough. Yeah, I mean, for me, I was in, heavily involved in in NDB or, or MySQL cluster back in the day. So for me, this is basically the ba like the really bare bone basics is the same, but it has all of the automation and all of the optimizations that that NDB lacked in the day, right? So it's to me, it's very exciting because it's like what I always wanted NDB to have. Now, now we have this in, in one in one product. Yeah, that's a great perspective to have. So you said quite a lot of things in the video, and you get good answers here on the Q and A. If I want to learn more, the doc documentation and the blogs, where should I start? That's a good question. I would definitely start with the documentation because uh, in the documentation we we've, we've recently added the expand part, so it's very new and it's basically there's no, it's not bloat that you won't have a hard time. Hey, where should I start? It's not. 200 pages it's you know 20 pages so it's it's easy to get started uh, in that and uh, expand how ready to use is it you said enterprise server december was the first one and now there's a maintenance release so is it ready to to roll definitely i mean we already have customers using it right so it's definitely ready to roll uh, it's also going ga in sky sequel in an upcoming release in a couple of uh, weeks so it's definitely uh, ready to roll uh, for and and actually, one thing I forgot to mention is that we now also have a trial version you can you can use from our website. So it's a lot easier than it used to be in the past. That's something we, we launched a couple of weeks ago. So it's really new that you can now get it and, and use it, uh, download it and use it anywhere on-prem. So you are now on a MariaDB Foundation uh, uh, event. And the, this is uh, more or less closed source. It's commercial only. So we're used to doing everything open source. Uh, and, and this is ob obviously not. So what kind of 
you mentioned there's, there's a trial version if one wants to try this anyway, even if it's not open source. Right. Yeah, so you get a basically a trial license that allows you to use it for, I don't, I don't remember, 90 days or something like that. Uh, we, we're, we're still looking into what to do. Like right now, it's a proprietary license sor uh, source code. We're, we're looking at different options going forward, uh, but we haven't yet decided exactly where, what, where to go with that. But it's something we are looking into actively. Great. So thank you, Max, for that. Thank you, Kai.